Hello. Hello, lovely people. Hello. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you're well. Thank you for giving me your Sunday evening again. <laughs> um, I always take your Sunday evening. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're well. Um, I don't know where you are. I mean, obviously, you you know, if you're living in the UK, then you might have uh, you might have uh, seen the downpour that we had not two hours ago. Not two hours ago, uh, we had quite a heavy downpour. Not two hours ago. That means less than two hours ago. We had quite a downpour, quite a strong, heavy downpour less than two hours ago. Um, so we had a heavy downpour um, not two hours ago. That means less than two hours ago. OK, less than two hours ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, up, up, up to that point, it was nice and sunny. It was lovely. And then suddenly <laughs> this this thunderstorm happened and um, yeah, uh, it started raining really heavily. Right. You had it in the northwest. Yes, I'm in the northwest as well. I, I'm in Manchester in the northwest. Lovely. Really nice to see you all. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you're well. Heavy downpour. Yes. Downpour is one word. Downpour. Downpour. Down. Pour. It means the water, the, the rain is pouring down. Uh, a lot of rain is coming down together. Downpour, downpour. Thank you, everybody. You've got very nice words that you're telling me. Thank you so much. Um, lovely, lovely. Not in London. Right. You didn't have a downpour in London. And it's windy in Bristol. OK, OK. Thank you for the update. <laughs> Lovely. So people are writing the correct pronunciation of downpour. Thank you. London was very hot today. You know what? I think it was very hot everywhere, not just in London, but um, the weather in Birmingham is OK. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Azimi8106. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, the weather here, it's it's been really close close i think i mentioned this word before maybe in a few other instagram live sessions that i've had the weather was very close today which means it was hot and sticky and humid and uncomfortable basically uh yeah really close today yeah heat wave heat wave london 2022 heat wave heat wave here in denmark is sunny and warm people are enjoying on the beach oh really Oh, OK. Lovely. Enjoy. Enjoy. OK. Weather in Budapest is perfect now. Sorry, I think my pronunciation is wrong. I think it should be Budapest, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry. Uh, I hate this muggy weather. Yeah, it is muggy. That's a good adjective. Here in Bolton, North Manchester, we had a downpour too. But it's very close. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you live? I live in Manchester, northwest of England. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, somebody asked me, have I ever been to Iran before? Yes. I was there when I was a child. Last time I was there, the last time I was there was, oh, gosh. Um, I think it was around 14 years ago. 14 or 15 years ago was the last time that I was in Iran and it seems like a lifetime, lifetime. That means it seems like my whole life I've been away and I, I, I just can't wait to go back, you know, uh, go back. That's what we're going to talk about <laughs> tonight. I cannot wait. Honestly, I cannot wait to just get tickets and you know take the kids my, my kids haven't been to iran before i want to show them what iran really means i want to show i want to take them in the middle of the people of iran who are the kindest the sweetest 
the most sincere, the most loyal, the most amazing people of the world. I really think that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're in trouble, I, I always think that somebody around you, if they are Iranian, they will come and at least help. At least they'll come and say, uh, are you OK? <laughs> you know, they, they will help. They will help. OK, they might not help financially. If finances are difficult for everybody, but I'm sure I'm sure they'll come and help, which is really helpful. You don't find it in all cultures, obviously. In America, when I lived in America, people, uh, they they try and help. Obviously, they come forward to help, but they are very careful about helping. I'll never forget when I was in the States, my kids were very young. So we went, I took my kids to a park to play in the evening when it had cooled down because it was really warm during the day. And my kids were playing uh, on the climbing frame, climbing frame, climbing frame, climbing frame. I'm not sure how you say it in Farsi. Uh, my kids were playing on the climbing frame that you climb up yeah my kids were playing on a climbing frame <coughs> excuse me my son was around maybe five my daughter was around three they were playing there was this other child who must have been around two years old so she was younger than my kids and she started climbing this climbing frame and her mum was busy chatting away with other parents and she wasn't watching her daughter so her two-year-old daughter started climbing the climbing frame and then bless her, Azizam, bless her, bless her, bless her, Aziz, bless her, bless her. She fell down. She fell down. Fortunately, she fell down on a patch of grass. She fell down on grass, so it wasn't too bad, but still it hurt. None of the people there none of the mothers, none of the fathers, because everybody saw this happening. Nobody went up to the girl to help her. Nobody. Everybody just called the mum. And I asked my friend, I said, what's going on? There's a two-year-old on the floor crying. Why isn't anybody helping? And she said, Layla, this is America. And uh, if any of you live in America, please correct me if I'm wrong. But my friend said in America, you have to be really careful. If that girl has fallen and she has damaged herself, you know, broken a leg or an arm or anything, and you go and touch her and it gets worse, the mum can sue you, even though you're trying to help. If you touch that girl and you hurt her, you know, for whatever reason, she can actually sue you. And that's why nobody goes to help, which is quite sad, isn't it? It's really sad. But yeah, but not any wrong. People just go up and help. That's how lovely they are. OK, here I am talking about how lovely people are in Iran. <laughs> you are here to... Um, learn a bit of English. So let's get back to the English, shall we? Before I start, I know I've been getting lots of messages from you, lovely, lovely people, asking me about the phrasal verbs and idioms course. This course will start on Monday, 3rd of July. OK, it's a course that during the week you study it yourself. It's a video. I send it to you. You watch the video. They're long videos. You watch the video. You've got the text. Uh, you've got the audio as well for listening practice. You study it. And then on Sundays at six o'clock sharp on Sundays, we get together um, on Zoom and you can ask any questions if you're not sure about the lesson. And if you've finished asking your questions, then we can talk about anything else that you like. Uh, about the lesson uh, or about English. It doesn't have to be about the lesson. So I'm always here um, if you need me. I've got uh, Jamali Samone, highly recommended. Thank you. Samone is one of the lovely people who is taking the course. Thank you very much, Samone. Uh, lovely, lovely. Okay. Uh, Samone, course, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, 
بسیار کار بردی very kind of you thank you very much بیتا دوره هاشون عالیه thank you thank you um, the thing is if you are looking for a course uh, if you want to study yes my prices are higher than the prices in Iran thank you uh, Masume uh, my prices are higher than the prices in Iran but that's because I live in the UK and I have to spend pounds in my life I can't spend two months in the UK which is why I charge in pounds uh, but next week just for one week just for one week I'm going to put an offer on the website and that is that if uh, you refer a friend اگر شما یک دوست رو معرفی کنید که اون دوستتون هم بتونن بیان یک دوره رو بگیرن you and your friend both get a discount okay so i'm going to put some kind of an offer just for one week next week on the course it's going to be phrasal verbs and idioms it's around 100 phrasal verbs that i have used in everyday english i've used a lot of idioms there as well And these are phrasal verbs and idioms that we use every day in everyday English. Okay. And all the information is on my website. So if you just go in my bio, all of it is there. Ibrahimi Bita, Yadgiri dar kenar shoma ba hiss amniyat dar pasokh dehi be soalat hamrahe. Inke dar direct ham pasokh ko hastin mamnuna. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Very kind of you. Uh, what's your address? It's in my bio. If you just go into my bio, you will see the website address. I've also started something else. Uh, Kayvon, hi Kayvon. The beauty of the course is you teach the British culture as well as phrasal verbs, idioms and so on. Thank you. I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that myself. Thank you. Um, that, uh, yes, obviously, when you're teaching the language... You can't just teach a language. You have to teach the culture. You have to teach the culture. If, uh, for example, post that we had, that I remember sharing or not, one person asked me, "Leila, if I am pushed to be with someone, and, ah, wait a minute, if one person else pushed to be with me and wants to be with me, what can I say in answer? What can I say in answer? خب in the culture of English in the English culture unfortunately unfortunately we don't usually turn around to the person behind us and say oh sorry we don't have that unfortunately it's only in your very respectful lovely lovely Iranian culture that you have that in the English culture we don't have that unfortunately uh, so I wouldn't usually turn around and say oh you know Sorry, uh, the English is excuse my back, excuse my back, excuse my back. Uh, and if somebody says excuse my back, in response, I can say you're all right, you are all right, you're all right, don't worry, you're all right, you're all right, yeah. In Farsi, we have these beautiful idioms, gol and beautiful, beautiful things that you say in Farsi. We don't have that in English, no. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's part. If you teach a language, you have to teach the culture with it. You can't just you know teach vocabulary and grammar. Teaching a language comes with the culture. So thank you for that, Kayvon. Thank you for reminding me <laughs> very much. Thank you. Okay. As Iran um, if you send me a message, please, I will send you. Um, and also tell me what courses it is you're interested in. I will send you um, I will send you the price in two months and also where you can uh, pay if that's okay. And uh, I don't have any IELTS courses. I'm so sorry. Um, one thing is that when you buy a course from me, any time, not just during that course, any time years after if you have a question about that course you come to me and you ask me a question because once you buy a course from me you are my student for life 
okay? I don't believe that learning English happens in two months. I don't think learning English happens in 10 weeks because that's impossible. So once you have uh, trusted me to be your teacher, thank you, once you've trusted me, then hopefully you will trust me that I will be your teacher for life. Not for life, but as long as you need me. So whenever you have a question, you come to me, you email me, you ask me in the comments or anything, and I will always answer. Do you have a special course regarding writing? Okay, I do. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to be able to correct your writing and send it back to you. I do have a writing course uh, and it teaches how to write different styles of writing, writing a letter, writing an article, writing, you know, all different notice letter, all of these. But in writing, because I need enough time to give you proper, complete feedback, I don't have that time, unfortunately. I don't have another teacher helping me. So that's why I haven't offered the writing course yet. Sorry. Okay. Uh, wow. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'm going to start blushing now. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very kind. Um, I've learned a lot from you. Thank you very much. Do you speak, uh, do you work as English teacher in the UK or do you have another job? Yes, this is my only job. Um, I work as an English teacher. I do lots of other things, but all of them are teaching English. That's what I do. Okay. Uh, do you have business English course? I don't have business English, no. No, I haven't done that yet, but that's a very good idea for me to start something like that. Okay. Um لیلا جان برای کودکان که تقریبا مسلط به زبان انگلیسی هستن هم آموزش دارید um, کودکان are lovely unfortunately I don't know how to teach children there is a special technique that you have to use uh, to teach kids yeah? you can't teach a 16 year old and a 3 year old at the same pace or with the same um, method that's not fair on the three-year-old, you know. Uh, I don't have, I don't have experience and I don't know the correct method of teaching children. That's why I don't teach kids, I'm sorry. My lessons are really boring. <laughs> I don't have any music, I have no animation. Sometimes on other people's pages and websites, I see their beautiful, polished, really, really nice digital courses that they're teaching with music and everything. I don't have any of that in my courses. All you have is just my face, my uh, my speaking and what you see on the screen. That's it. And I'm sure a child would find that really boring. I'm sorry. Okay. Kelase khususi? No, sorry. When I teach, I teach using the courses, the courses that I have. Um, okay. Ma enjoy majani at migini. Yeah? Okay. Lucky you. <laughs> Okay, lovely. So I'm going to get back to the lesson. I can chat with you all day. Oh, my goodness. And it's already, uh, what time is it? It's already around about 20 past seven. I can honestly chat with you all day, all day. Uh, we have an idiom. I can talk for England. I can talk for England. I might have mentioned this before in one of my live sessions uh, for myself. Yeah, I can talk for England. I can talk a lot. Okay, so uh, tonight we said that we're going to look at a few phrasal verbs. A lot of these in Farsi are bargashtan, yeah? So a lot of them, the meaning in Farsi is bargashtan. But in English we use different phrasal verbs. So here they are. The first one is come back, come back, come back. Past tense, came back, past participle, came back. Uh, come back, sorry, past participle, let's come back again. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so one come back is when you go back, you return somewhere. Let's say I am here in the UK and let's say you have gone to France, yeah, on holiday. So you are somewhere different, but you live here. 
Right now you are in France. I call you. Hi, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Okay, so I, the speaker, I'm here and I'm asking you, you are somewhere else. You're not here with me. You are somewhere else. And I ask you, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? In Farsi, ke bar gardi. But in English, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? So that's when you return somewhere, return to a place. Another meaning of come back is when you talk about pain starting again in your body. That's also the phrasal verb we use for come back, come back. Let's say, for example, um, let's say I have pain in my back. I have pain in my shoulders. I have pain anywhere, anywhere. And right now my pain has come back. My pain has come back. So my pain goes away when I'm asleep, but then it comes back. I've got a sentence for you. Uh, I tell my doctor, the pain comes back every time I overexert myself. That's a nice word for you. Overexert. It's one word. Over, over, over. Exert, exert. So the spelling. O V E R over exert E X E R T E X E R T one word over exert over exert over exert it means when I do too much activity and my heart rate goes up or if I do something that is too difficult for me if I've usually got backache and I start lifting something that's really heavy that's called overexerting myself so i tell the doctor the pain comes back when i overexert myself if i for example had pain in my knee and then the pain went away now because of my job i'm standing for a long time the pain has come back yeah doctor the pain comes back when I overexert myself. That means I do something that's really difficult for me. It's a lot of energy. Overexert, overexert. Beta, thank you. Overexert, correct spelling, lovely. So overexert is one word. It's a verb and it means when I uh, do something that's too difficult or it takes a lot of energy, it's too difficult for me. That's when the pain comes back, comes back. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Leila, as Khodam Ziad Kar Keshidam. Sure, sure. How about other symptoms like diseases, like fever or anything? Uh, the fever comes back, yeah. The feeling comes back. The nausea comes back. Anything. Absolutely. Good question. Yeah, yeah. Overwhelmed. Lovely. Okay. So the pain comes back when I overexert myself. Uh, another time we use come back is when you start remembering or hopefully you will start to remember again soon. Has this ever happened to you when you're out and you see somebody and you think, oh my God, I know you. I've seen you somewhere before. I just can't remember your name. Has this ever happened to you? Uh, that's where we say, for example, I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before i'm sure i've seen him or her somewhere before um it will come back to me it will come back to me it it can be the name it can be the memory it can be the situation anything it'll come back to me i'm sure i've seen him somewhere before it'll come back to me so that's a memory that will come back to me that's when we use that phrasal verb as well um okay mishe man tabkhal ro begin tabkhal um cold so cold so cold so cold so okay so it will come back to me bitter thank you it'll come back to me that means i'll remember and the last comeback that we have is for fashion when fashion comes back, something that used to be in fashion 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, and it's coming back, fashion that's coming back. I know for, 
I have no sense of fashion. As you can see from my clothes, I have no sense of fashion. It's a language I do not understand, <laughs> fortunately. Sorry. Um, but I know, for example, when I go looking around in department stores, I've seen the long ankle skirt is coming back. The long ankle skirt, ankle, ankle, mucha paya, ankle, a n k l e, ankle, ankle. Uh, it's it's a long skirt that uh, goes all the way down to your ankles. It's a long skirt. So I can see the long ankle skirt is coming back. That means it's becoming fashionable again. It's becoming fashionable again. And for the gents, for the gents, the gentlemen, for the gents, correct me if I'm wrong, um, utility trousers are coming back. Is that right? Utility trousers. We call it utility trousers. These are trousers that have lots of pockets and usually maybe mechanics or um, technicians, maybe engineers. Uh, people wear them because they've got lots and lots of pockets. Builders, all these kind of people. Jean skirts are coming back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, okay. Gents trousers are coming back. Very good. Can you repeat sentence about coming back pain? Yes. So the back pain comes back. The back pain comes back when I overexert myself. Um, I'm trying to record. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to record this. Hopefully it will record on my phone and I'm going to put it straight on uh, YouTube. Uh, so hopefully it'll be OK. But but I'm going to write this down in the caption again on YouTube. OK, you can find them in vintage shops. Yes. Could you run that by me again? Cargo pants. That's another name as well. Lovely. So those are the four different meanings of come back, come back. Let's go to the next phrasal verb, which is get back, get back. OK, so you've gone on holiday and I ask you, when do you get back? When do you get back? This is very similar to come back. Yeah. So if you live in the UK and you've gone to France, I ask you, when do you get back? When do you get back? So get back and come back for when you return somewhere is the same thing. You can use both. They have exactly the same meaning. Um, but one place where get back is different to come back is if I'm talking to you about phrasal verbs and then suddenly, for example, somebody says, Kabhal before Bengalisi Chimishe. I say, cold saw, cold saw, cold saw. Okay, so we got distracted a little bit. And then I say, okay, let's get back to the topic. That means we got distracted. Now let's return to the topic that we're talking about. Let's get back to the topic. Let's get back to the meeting. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to studying anything. So you were in the middle of doing something, then you got interrupted, and now you want to return to that action. Let's get back. Let's get back. Salam Lilo. Para inke mutawajjeh beshim taraf mukabel chimiye, boyad chiro bishtar tamrin konim. Wow. That's uh, OK. So to be honest, you need to it would be really helpful. It would be really helpful if you had um, an understanding of the vocabulary of the topic that you're talking about. At least then you can predict what that person is trying to say. Um, I always suggest brushing up, brushing up on idioms. We use idioms a lot. In English, phrasal verbs, idioms, we use them a lot. Um, I also suggest that you practice your listening wherever you live. If you live in the UK, America, Australia, wherever you live, which is English speaking, I honestly suggest you watch or listen to the radio of that local place if you can. Um, that will really help. It will help with your listening, basically. 
It's really hard understanding native language. I still have problem understanding my husband. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy, is it? Uh, a lot of it, though, because I had a lesson a few minutes ago with, with lovely uh, phrasal verb and idiom students. And a lot of the time, I mean, a lot of you know English. I'm, I'm talking native English at a regular pace and you're getting what I'm saying. So there's nothing wrong with your English. You understand. I think one of the difficulties is that you your ears might be used to a certain type of pronunciation and you might not have a lot of practice with native pronunciation. That could be one issue. And also your ears aren't accustomed to, they're not familiar with different accents. That could be another thing. But I, I'm sure a lot of the information is already in your mind. Uh, Merci. The website is in my bio. Uh, sup? Hey, sup? <laughs> Nice to have you. Thank you for joining. Dora hai ke native mitune bashoma dashte bashe. Ram migid azizam. Dora hai ke native mitune bashoma dashte bashe. Sorry, I don't know what you mean. Dora hai ke native mitune bashoma dashte bashe. I'm so sorry. I don't know what that means. If you can say it in a different way, maybe. Um, uh, Leila, which class going to help me? It depends on your level. Oh, yes, I know you. Hi, hi. Uh, it depends on your level of English. If you feel like you're an intermediate level, um, I would suggest you go for speaking course one. That teaches you everyday English. Um, speaking course two is more for more formal English. If you want to do jobs out of the house, you want to rent accommodation, you want to get ready for a job interview. Um, if you want to, I don't know, uh, stuff that you do outside of the house. Uh, so speaking one is more for everyday, day to day jobs, going to the supermarket, going to the post office, chemist, that kind of thing. Speaking two is a little bit more advanced. Speaking three is even more advanced because I teach with idioms. In speaking three, I'm teaching with idioms. So you can choose any of these. Uh, oh, what was that? Sorry, I got somebody. Um, sorry, if I am inter sorry if I'm interrupting. Can you explain what you used to hear before you start learning fast? Oh my God, I'm going to get embarrassed now. Because I heard other people mostly he hear ch and sh sound. Right, right. Um, <laughs> um when I started learning Farsi, okay, and my kids have the same problem right now. My kids can't say kh and they can't say g. One of their favorite foods is geime. They love geime, rice and geime, geime. They love geime. They love gand with tea and uh, what else? They love, uh, they don't say khoresh, they say horesh, h, h. So these sounds are really difficult for somebody to create <clears throat> because there is nowhere in the mouth that you can say, Layla, your tongue has to be there, your teeth have to be there, your lips. No, it comes from back, doesn't it? The back of the throat. So it takes a long time to master these sounds. And even now, sometimes I find it difficult. I have to speak really slowly. It's all about practice. We have all the muscles in our mouth to know all the languages of the world. We just need to practice it. We just need to practice it. Okay, lovely. Thank you for that. So shall we get back, get back? Shall we get back to the lesson? Next one is go back, go back. Okay, so let's say that you and I went to the cinema together and we watched a film. It was really nice, really enjoyed it. And now we are home. And you suddenly remember, oh, my God, you've left your phone in the cinema. You've left your phone in the cinema. So I say, OK, go back, go back to the cinema, get your phone and come back in Farsi. Bargard, telephone to Vardar, Babad Bargard Khune. Yeah? So all of it is Bargard. 
in in Farsi. But in English, I say go back, go back. That means I'm talking about somewhere where I am not there and you are not there. OK, go back, go back. So that's somewhere different, a different location, a different location. Go back. So we were there before and then we left and then we want to go back, go back, go back. OK, um, for example, I might say to you, I have to go back for a follow-up in a fortnight uh, i'm telling you about my doctor's appointment i have to go back go back that means to the doctors i have to go back for a follow-up 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 that means i had a, an appointment before now i want to go for the second part of the appo appointment follow-up follow-up i have to go back for a follow-up in a fortnight, that means in two weeks, you'll have to get in a fortnight, in a fortnight. I'm going to write all of these down in the caption on YouTube. OK, um, another time when we use go back is for time. When do the clocks go back? 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 We use it for time. Uh, we also use it when two people are friends. They have been friends for a long time. Mrs. X and I go back a few years. Mrs. X and I go back a few years. I don't say four. Mrs. X and <clears throat> Mrs. X, excuse me. Mrs. X and I go back a few years. That means Mrs. X and I have known each other for a long time. Sarah and I go back a few years. Yeah, Sarah and I go back a few years. So that means um, that we've known each other for a long time. We've known each other for a long time. And finally, be back, be back. It means budan, bergeshtan ki yani budan, budan. Ke injayi, shoma ala injayi si turayi, ke injayi. When will you be back? When will you be back? So come back, get back. These are actions, okay? Be back is a state. Budan hast. Anjame kar nist. As shoma me porsam, ke injayi alan shoma tu ra hasti? Ke injayi. When will you be back? When will you be back? Okay. Um, you might have come to, you might have come to a house and you are looking for Layla. And somebody says, sorry, Layla has just popped out. Layla has just popped out. That means she's gone out just for a few minutes. Layla has just popped out. She will be back in two ticks. That means in two seconds. Layla has just popped out. She'll be back in two ticks. She'll be back in two seconds. That means she'll be back very soon. So when will you be back? Lovely, lovely. So Layla has just popped out, popped out, popped out, phrasal verb. Layla has just popped out. She'll be back in two ticks. Yes, that's my Bastani Furushi. <laughs> he comes here every Sunday, every Sunday, and he parks right outside my house. I think he knows I've got two teenagers. He knows how much they love ice cream. But my kids can't have ice cream yet because they haven't had their dinner yet. Uh, okay, so be back is budan, yeah? Ke injayi, ke bar me gari ke, yani ke khune hast. Ke khune hast, okay. Um, I might have left. Now I am back. I am back. Raftam alan injam, inja hastam. I left. Now I am back. I'm back, Okay. If I if I were able to go back in time, oh Ali, oh my goodness! If I were able to go back in time, oh, what year would you go back to? What era? What century would you go back to? That's a good question. How to improve V and W pronunciation because dictation is important and we have only V vowel in Farsi. Practice, practice, Solmaz. It all comes with practice. In English, we don't have kh, we don't have k, but I'm doing it. 
it's it's all about practice it's all about uh teaching the muscles in the mouth how to pronounce something once we have taught the muscle how to pronounce it that's not enough i have to keep practicing i have to keep practicing the story will say for us yes i'm going to save it on youtube چطور فارسی و اونقدر عالیه و بدون لحجه واو بدون لحجه صحبت میکنید لحجه که دارم مرسی ولی لطف دارین شما I, uh, my father is Persian, so I started learning Farsi when I was a kid, on and off, um, and so that's how I've been learning, but I'm still learning, I'm still learning. When are you back? Lovely, lovely, when are you back? Okay. پدر و مادرتون ایرانی بودن? No, just my father. My mother's, my mother's British. My mother's British, okay. How can you talk fluently Farsi like a native? Believe me, I'm not fluent. Believe me, you can ask any of my students. It's very kind of you. You are beyond compare, Bita. You're very nice. You're very kind. Thank you very much. Um, um, جوری نبود. فیلم های قبلش رو ببینید با ما یاد گرفتن و بهتر شدن. Yes, I agree with you. Honestly, honestly. اون اولا خیلی من بیشتر از اینا منومن میکردم درسته مرسی مرسی I owe you a lot definitely okay lovely so uh, thank you very much for watching everybody thank you so much for being here with me uh, this is going to be saved fingers crossed it's going to be saved on YouTube I'm going to write all of this down in the caption on YouTube and then I will share uh, the link of this YouTube video on my story. Thank you for all your questions that you ask me on Instagram. And I respond and I share it with everybody in the story because I, I think hopefully it will be useful to other students as well. So thank you for bearing with me. I've got lots and lots of stories lined up, but that's what it is. If you want to take part in the Phrasal Verbs and Idioms course, please do. Um, the course will start on the 3rd of July. I know it's a little bit pricey for people in Iran, but I'm going to put an offer on next week that if you get a course, if you refer a friend, both of you will be able to get a discount. OK, I'll put something like that on the website for one week uh, just to help people. And as soon as you get that course, it stays with you for life. So whenever you have any questions, you come back to me um, and I, I, I won't let you forget, basically. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a very good evening. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.